formula for the sum of two angles. And the formula for the sum of two angles, I don't know why I was writing this, the sum sine of u plus v is equal to the sine of u cosine of e plus cosine of u sine of e. Right? So aren't these kind of like in the same thing? We could basically just say this is u and that's v. Right? I mean, same kind of order. Um, now, the other thing is, now what's very important though, is remember, the, based on the quadrant, the signs are going to matter, correct? Based on which quadrant we're in. So let's take a look at this. 7 pi over 4, which quadrant is that in? Fourth. Fourth. So what does that mean? It's negative, right? So I'm just going to put a little negative there just to remind me when I plug this in. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just, we don't know it's negative. Depends on which, what we're evaluating for. Um, and then sine of 5 pi over 6, that's going to be in the second quadrant. Okay. So now, here's the step I want you guys to go. You don't need to rewrite the formula. But the step that I would like you guys to do is rewrite the problem as is this step of actually plugging them in. Not evaluating them, but just plugging them in. So this would be the sine of u, which is 7 pi over 4 times the cosine of 5 pi over 6 plus the cosine of 7 pi over 4 times the sine of 5 pi over 6. I would like you guys to take that extra step. Okay? Show me this. Show me at least you know how to plug it in. Okay? Yes, that's important, especially for work if you're gaining credit. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Now, we just evaluate these based on the inner circle. Sine of 7 pi over 4. Well, I know that's in the fourth quadrant, so the sign is going to be negative. Hopefully, I know my unit circle here really well now because that is negative square root of 2 over 2, right? Yes? Cosine of 5 pi over 6, OK? I know that's going to be square root of 3 over 2, but it's in the second quadrant, so that's also a negative. The use of parentheses, I would not understate. OK? One thing I noticed in the quiz last time that you guys did, a lot of you guys like wrote negatives here. And then you just didn't put parentheses. So it literally looked like subtracting, right? Now, mathematically, even though it's wrong because you've got to still write the multiplication, you've got to be careful. Like, what if you skip that problem, came back to it, right? And then tried to finish it. And then you look at it, you're like, oh, this is a subtraction problem. I've got to, like, we've got to be careful. You, still, you need to still represent multiplication. So you could see use a multiplication sign instead of parentheses, but I like to use parentheses to group everything. So now the cosine of 7 pi over 4, that's also square root of 2, but it's in the fourth quadrant, so that's positive. And then we have the sine of 5 pi over 6, which is positive, and that's going to be 1 half. Is everybody following me here? So I'd like to see this. I would like to see this. All right. And then really, guys, the last step is I would just like to have a simplified kind of form. So now let's multiply these. Now again. Remember how we took this square root of 9 times 4 and we broke them apart into square root of 9 times square root of 4? So if we have the product, can we rewrite them as under the same radical? Yeah, so this is really negative times negative is positive, but this is the square root of 6 over 4 plus the square root of 2 over 4. Okay? And I'd like you guys to at least get to this step. That would be the third answer. Oh, yeah. And I'd, that'd even be better if you added them. Now, can we add these, though, together? Can we add the square root of 2 to get square root of 8? Remember the, nine, remember the square root of 9 minus 4? You couldn't break them apart in your square root of 9 minus the square root of 4, right? So don't try to add these together. We just, I just showed you that doesn't work with the square root of 9 minus 4. You can't break them apart. Yes? So don't try to add these. They're not the same radicand. They don't have the same radicand, so you can't do that. So either one of these are OK. Now, I want you guys to be careful, though, because on a multiple choice test, they might give it the answer in a different format. So on a multiple choice test, they might factor out the 1 fourth. They could look like that. Or from the very beginning, do you guys see how these both share a square root of 2? Actually, they both have, I'm sorry, over here, they both have a square root of 2 and they both have a 4 in common. So you could also factor out a square root of 2 divided by 4. 
And when you do that, you would be left with a square root of 3 plus 1. You could also look at something like this. Or they could leave fractions in there. I don't know how the answer is going to look, guys. I'm just telling you. Usually, I guess they would probably factor out the 4. But um, I don't know. It could all be written in different ways. Just make sure if you get this answer that these are also different ways to write it. Okay.